Hello, everyone. Welcome to Interfed Digital Tech Day 2020. In this presentation, I am going to showcase industry's most versatile remote reflashing solution for test fleet vehicles, remote benches, or breadboards. A quick introduction to myself. My name is Samir Bhagwat, and I'm Director of Engineering Services at Intrapid Control Systems USA. And I have added focus on advanced projects and newer technologies uh, in our production solutions. I am located at Intrapid's headquarters in Troy, Michigan, USA. And uh, of course, I'll always be delighted to talk to you further, answer your queries on remote reflash or any other products you might be interested from us. Uh, my email ID is right there on your screen right now, samirb at interpretcs.com. And feel free to write me an email, pass me on comments on this presentation, or if you need more information uh, on our other product. This will be my agenda today for the talk. I'm going to discuss uh, durability and test vehicle fleet ECU software update challenges. What are the challenges associated with this? I'm going to also uh, talk very basics on how the flashing actually works in an ECU and how or the air flashing works. Uh, then I'll present some of the solutions from us uh, for different kind of you know flash capabilities we have and how we work with different OEMs on uh, flashing ECUs. And I'm going to go in more details of how remote OTA flashing technology can be used uh, for your fleet flashing. So some of the challenges which are encountered by, by many OEMs and suppliers regarding multiple ECU flashing in a vehicle in remote fleet uh, is basically the vehicles could be located at remote locations and there might be need to update the ECU software like improving grounds or test lots and breadboards. There are frequent changes during testing and validation from multiple ECU vendors and for multiple OEM test vehicles which are used for different functional domain testing. So a specific ECU software might not be uh, suitable for a different kind of functional domain testing in the fleet vehicles. At the same time, there are constraints related to the tool itself. Uh, generally, there is a single ECU flashed at a time, so there is a lot more time consumed in flashing multiple ECUs. The process is very manual. Uh, generally an operator or an engineering uh, you know, resource has to physically be present around the flashing EC vehicle or, or the fleet uh, in a garage or uh, on a proving ground uh, pre vehicle prep areas. So there is a cost and then there is a need for tool maintenance too. Uh, the tool which is required to flash has to be maintained by the OEM or, you know, or an engineering team which is associated with that. There is sometimes a need for a driver and operator to be present around the vehicle for key in operation or ignition uh, key operation for as a part of the flash sequence. And in such cases, we recommend use of vivid can or devices like this from us, which can give an uh, instruction to the operator for a specific step he has to take or she has to take for the as part of flashing. Let's talk about some of the basics in ECU flashing and uh, how does ECU actually flash. I'm going to just give you know, a few minutes of time here. And if you have more questions and more details, information you need, please do contact me. Typically, a ECU requires an hex or S19 or a binary file, which has program memory, uh, which has the execution logic uh, in the object format. In a binary file format. Uh, so typically hex, S19, or bin files are output from a compiler linker stage when it the software is built for the embedded controller. And these files have the information about address and payload and the data. And those files are required by our flash tool or any flash tool for that matter to flash the ECU. When such flash files are created, generally OEMs will wrap this, these flash files in a set of their own individual you know, set of files or their own architecture of flashing. 
For example, a OEM could just use directly the binary file format. Some other OEMs which we work to get, work very closely have a, a set of files which, which, which tells a tool how to actually flash a specific ECU. And there are a lot of information, a lot of steps, and a lot of interaction with the ECU needed for a successful flash. Uh, ASM specifies an ODX file format and it, it defines a lot of information needed for uh, a flashing sequence for an ECU. So there are multiple ways uh, OEMs you know, choose and decide based on different things of how they want their ECUs to be flashed. One of the primary things in uh, any flash process to be successful is the security access of the ECU. Uh, ISO 14229 specifies a sequence uh, of commands and responses which unlock an ECU. Uh, so the concept behind is the tool which is going to flash the ECU requests a seed uh, set of bytes from ECU and ECU responds with the seed. Uh, there is a specific encryption algorithm which creates a key on both sides from the sender and receiver side or client and server both. So ECU calculates the key, uh, tool also calculates the key, tool sends the key to the ECU and ECU matches that key with the key it calculated. If they match and if there are other conditions which are met, the ECU is gonna be unlocked. And in this unlock, in, in this unlock mode only one can... Let's talk about Intrapid ECU flashing solutions. So Intrepid offers various options and solutions for uh, multiple use cases for ECU flashing. The first one is remote ODA vehicle fleet uh, flashing. Uh, this is where we this is where we are going to talk in more details in you know upcoming slides, uh, where we can flash ECUs uh, in the vehicle remotely. The second option is standalone handheld flashers. So NeoVI Ion would be the option here that product can be configured as a standalone handheld flasher for your parking lot flashing or your uh, fleet flashing uh, where you have physically you need to go to a vehicle. Then we have end of, end of line parallel flashers uh, or elsewhere where the parallel flashing is needed. Uh, for example, when we have to flash 16 ECUs on a rack in parallel, then vehicle spy has the ability to add multiple flashers and uh, and multiple of the ECUs can be flashed in a single uh, a single time frame. Then we have ECU flasher, which is inbuilt in Vehicle Spy. This is typically you know most popular use case where uh, engineers have to flash an ECU and they are validating using Vehicle Spy, a bench or in a setup. Uh, they can just flash the ECUs, which is in, you know, the flasher is inbuilt in vehicle spy. So these all four options are available uh, today. We fully support ISO 14229 and 1575-2, uh, obviously, and uh, our years of expertise in diagnostic and flashing and interacting with the ECU uh, has been very useful for our customers, making sure the ECUs are correctly flashed. We fully support today flashing over ethernet and most of these uh, are custom flashers which are done for OEMs. Uh, typically so add layer is used uh, which allows to connect over sockets between ECU and vehicle spy and then the flashing can be done over ethernet. And then we have worked with many OEMs and tier suppliers on OEM basically their custom flashers. These are the flashers which they have very specific needs on. When it comes to Vehicle Spy and our tools, we have multiple uh, tools inside Vehicle Spy to help with flashing. ECU Flash Designer allows you to configure the flash sequence in the Vehicle Spy for a specific ECU. ECU Flash Manager allows you to configure multiple flashers based on different networks and ECUs to help with parallel flash or for that matter flash of different ECUs on different networks. Then we have remote OTA generator tool inside the same flash manager where an output from this remote generator is fed onto wirelessneovi.com for remote flashing.
we'll look into this more in upcoming slide. Then we have a unique feature where an EXC application can be output from Vehicle Spy, and this application can do just flashing. This means you you have capability to deploy multiple flashers across different users who themselves may not need to change the flash sequence. So essentially, you can output an application for them and deploy the deploy this at a lower cost across your whole company. Let's talk about uh, remote flashing uh, in more details now of what we offer and what is available today. So there are three major components when it comes to remote vehicle ECU flashing uh, from, our, uh, from, from our products. The first one is Vehicle Spy. Uh, this is a desktop software, very popular in the industry. It's one of the industry's benchmark solution for uh, vehicle network analysis, simulation, and so on and so forth. Vehicle Spy also has, has the capability to flash ECUs. So this is the first component needed to flash ECUs. The second needed is NeoVIA Ion. This is a very popular hardware, uh, and various OEMs use this as their remote data logging, remote ECU flashing solution. It has eight dual wire CAN CAN FD channels, and it supports 4G and Wi-Fi for wireless connectivity to the server. The third component here is wirelessneovi.com. That is our website and server software package. Wireless Neovi allows you to interact with the remote vehicle for flash operations. Thus, from any PC or laptop with internet connection, you can reflash the ECUs. So how does uh, the whole setup works? Uh, so let's go into this slide here. So this is how the process looks like. It's pretty simple, straightforward, and almost no manual intervention to flash the ECUs. Step number one is to configure the steps for flashing ECU itself in Vehicle Spy. This requires access to flash files, S19 files, and security DLLs. Once this set of files are available and all the pre and post diagnostic sequences are known for the ECU, that all can be input in Vehicle Spy in ECU Designer. And from there, a VS3 zip or a YV file is output. This is a custom file from us or a custom set of files from us. And this, once this is output, it is sent over internet to a remote server or wirelessnewway.com. So essentially, uh, the desktop environment will output a YV file and it can be loaded into the web browser or the wirelessnewway.com. So once you log in into wirelessnewway.com and you have been authenticated to access that vehicle and that remote ion, then you can upload the flash file onto the wirelessnewway.com. Then on the server or wirelessnewway.com, you can trigger the flash after selecting the right vehicle or you could select the entire fleet. What that means is all the ECUs which, you, which have been configured in the configuration file will be flashed in a single click. So this is a basic overview and process of how the flash flashing is done remotely, uh, remote OTA based flashing. Remember, wirelessneovia.com is an extensive package which has you know, capability for a very large number of vehicles in the fleet and their management for flashing, for data logging, for remote reconfiguration, and all, all the associated technologies. So what all, what all is required when uh, we want to set up a remote OTA fleet flasher in wirelessnewa.com? You require all the flash files, all CAL files. We do require 
all the information about flash sequences, which is very important. If the communication, communication control has to be turned off, then you know we need to know exactly uh, what all are the requirements. So all ISO 14229 command sequences, uh, security DLL, of course, you need security DLL to unlock the ECU. Uh, we have capability to remotely unlock the ECU use of, through use of security DLL. Then ECU addresses, of course, you know, physical and functional addresses. And can can it be baud rate information? So with this piece of this set of information, uh, you can configure the flasher. And the flash configuration menu in vSpy looks like this. So this is one of the one of the views uh, for flash designer, where first one has to create an ECU. Essentially, this would be the target ECU which is going to be flashed. And then there is a sequence of actions to be provided for successful flashing. So generally, there are pre-programming functional requirements for the subnet on which the ECU sits. You may need to have a diagnostic session control, DTC setting, you know, tester timers or routine control, communication control. Those are all typical pre-programming functional steps. Then there are also pre-programming physical steps where an ECU has to be put in right state before it can be flashed. The next step typically is to load the driver files, uh, flash files, and execute a simple single command, which you know, rest of the things inside and the rest of the sequences are taken care of by vehicle spy. So you kind of point it to the file which has to be flashed. Once that is done, a sequence like this is created. One has to simply click on this generate button to output a YV file. This YV file is our own custom set of files, which is to be sent to the server or wirelessnewy.com. Once sent to the server, uh, and when the flash is triggered, there are multiple ways you could trigger the flash. You could manually trigger the whole fleet. You could trigger uh, a specific vehicle. And or you could or you could trigger multiple ECUs on the same vehicle through the same configuration through a single click. That also is possible entirely. So on the cloud or the wirelessnewway.com, uh, we have currently the capability. Uh, we provide some capabilities which are by default, which kind of applies to all our customers and all OEMs. And that is basically to show the progress of flashing. Uh, on which network and which ECU, so we show which network and which ECUs are being flashed to, you know, and the, the progression, you know, how much percentage of the ECU flashing is complete. Uh, so you can remotely monitor the flash progress, success, failure. There is also uh, capability to flash and log the flashed file for each ECU. What this means is we can record in parallel the log of each flash from end to beginning, which stays on the server and you have log of every flash ever happened on that vehicle to any ECU on that vehicle. We also have full capability to write software fingerprint information, read, write, store on the website and uh, the same information can be used to display uh, to the user. Clear DTC, control DTC setting, and all diagnostic pre-post are fully supported as I described in my previous slide. So this information is completely accessible over wireless or internet, and the user or the engineer who is flashing the ECUs in a remote really need to be on the location. There are many cases, uh, as in past, we have so much experience working with OEMs on large flashing solutions and large fleet solutions. All the time and most of the time, there is a requirement of wirelessneovi.com to be adapted for a specific OEM. Typically, the database, uh, which has the information about software part number, which has information uh, related to and which is needed for uh, successful flash is with OEMs. And in that case, we very closely work with OEM to provide uh, provide a UI and uh, updated UI, which 
runs their own specific logic. For example, typical customization areas are uh, how the ECU software, num existing ECU software part number is viewed. What kind of custom flash supersedence logic should work? When to essentially flash an ECU? Is that based on software part number or is it based on some other logic? So that is very custom to an OEM or tier supplier. And we have capability to implement that on wirelessneo.com as a custom adaptation. The, there are also many ECUs and most of them do require a driver or operator in many cases. And how to interface in that case uh, is something custom to a vehicle or an OEM and we we work with OEM and custom uh, for the custom setup for their vehicle and ECU. So in general, we have the capability to flash your entire fleet uh, of vehicles remotely uh, in a very robust fashion and deploy the solution very quickly for you. This not just helps in reducing the cost, but it also automates the whole system. There is almost no manual intervention of connection, disconnection, uh, and so on and so forth. So we, 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 we have the capability today to keep your fleet updated with the required softwares on each of those ECUs on all the networks inside the vehicle. We have on our server, wirelessnew.com, uh, capability uh, capabilities which are very unique, like we have integrated post analysis tool or IPA. So if you want to analyze and root cause the failure of a flash sequence, then IPA or a tool like IPA can allow you to deep data mine on the logs which are stored on the server through the flash. And these logs can be analyzed through IPA and an automatic reporting can be generated if to, which identifies what kind of failures might have been the reason. There could be different dashboards. We could build custom for you, as I described before, uh, to show variant or compatibility metrics and uh, flash supersedence logic and things like that. So in, in to sum up this, wirelessneovi.com is it can be your single interface to all the ECU software in all of your fleet. This solution is very robust, very safe and secured and uh, to deploy and it is capable to keep the data security and authentication at the highest possible level. So I'm going to talk about integrity, security and authentication of the data in the next slide. Wirelessnewia.com is a very secured system. Uh, all the flash files have hash checksums, so there is no possibility of corrupting a flash or having corrupted flash file. We have SSL, uh, SSL built across the entire tool for uh, encrypted security so that you know uh, it can be prevented from a adversary attack. We have very powerful user authentication. This means every user's authority is exactly configured as per what can be given to him. If a user A can flash only these 10 vehicles in a specific proving ground, then he has authority to only do that. So we have very powerful user authentication. Key advantages of using wirelessneovia.com, Neovia Ion solution for OTA vehicle ECU flashing. So there are various, uh, you know, use cases for uh, remote vehicle, you know, data logging configuration and flashing. When you have a product like Neovia Ion in your vehicle, this means most of these activities can be done remotely, which is a huge advantage when it comes to uh, accessibility of vehicle, you know, engineer not needing to go to a vehicle for updating the vehicle. So single hardware unit, Neovia Ion, is in vehicle for advanced data logging and remote flashing together. This is very important to emphasize and I would like to talk about this quickly. Same Neovia Ion, which is used to reflash the vehicle, can also log the entire data of the vehicle, which is one of the most popular solution in the market today. Uh, about data logging capability of the ION, we have a separate tech 
event and uh, please look for it from us. Uh, it's going to talk about in full details using the same Neovia ION for data logging. Again, wirelessneovia.com, this server is to manage the fleet flashing and remote data logging both. So a single solution, single server deployed can also log data for you over and above your requirements to flash your fleet ECUs. We have data analytics application IPA and data visualization and mining tool data spy. Both of them are available on the server and based on your requirements, these two tools can also be deployed in, in the wireless uh, remote flashing application. So these three pieces of information or these three pieces of products uh, make remote reflashing data logging uh, very reliable, robust, and easy to use. Thank you for your time. Uh, if you have more questions, do ask me. My email ID is right there, samirb at intrepidcs.com. Uh, I will be more than happy to talk to you about you know, providing a demo or uh, more, talk to you more about if you have more questions on uh, remote reflashing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.